Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are tuning in. It is so good to be here live, a few technical issues today, quite a few actually, but it's all about showing up and how do we show up. So this is Clarity Coach Lucy and this is Tuesday Talks at Three. Welcome to our episode. This August is about authors, as we spotlight stories by the fireplace, which is a book that has been written by a couple of authors. And this August is about spotlighting each of these authors. And last week, we had Louis Momani. Unfortunately, our guest today has been taken ill. So off to a bumpy start. Uh, we had technology hitches as we started off. Uh, we don't have a guest today as earlier advertised. So a big shout out to you, Catherine Silver, who was our scheduled guest for this afternoon. Catherine, if you're listening to this, we wish you a full and quick recovery and look forward to hosting you on this platform as we celebrate our Kenyan diversity. Well, today we seek to understand self and I am the one on the spotlight today. So I looked for an episode that I have done in the past and I was able to come up with a throwback on our launch. We had the launch of uh, Tuesday Talks at Three on Instagram. And when I was going through this particular episode, so many things rang, rang true, I beg your pardon, rang true for me. And uh, this episode has great learnings that are still relevant today. And I do hope that you will find great value in the playback. I'm just going to check that indeed we are live uh, so that we can continue and play the playback and just pull that out, all right? Just checking it and yes, we have been live. Great to see you there, Lillian Gerono, great to see you. Yes, a quick recovery to her, Lillian, definitely. Well, we are here and we do hope that whoever else is watching will find value in this playback. So as we continue to do that, I am just going to put on the playback and prepare for that in a moment. So why the playback? Well, simply put, because I choose to show up in this way by being true to my values of consistency and reliability. You see, I take my responsibility to you, my audience, very seriously. I had promised you a session today. I promise that I show up every Tuesday at this time to give you nuggets that can help you build yourself so that you can move on from where you are to your desired place in life or whatever area it is that you're working on, maybe give you some clarity. And this is why I chose a playback today so that I am showing up. I am true to myself. And if I could just digress a little bit here, when I do not show up, because showing up is, a, as an, is an important part of my makeup. When I do not show up, I do not feel aligned. I feel disturbed. I don't feel like things are going well. Perhaps you have been feeling this lately. You've been wondering why something is off in your aura. Why every time you would sit down to do something, you just feel something is not sitting right. Well, may I suggest to you that perhaps it is your values that you are having a challenge being true to. How about trying something out like I am doing today? So this happened for me. It gave me an opportunity to look back and into deep reflection of the person that I am. Unfortunately, it took Catherine falling ill for me to get to this point, but I look at it as a silver lining. Today's episode is reminding me that I am true to my values. So we ask the question, how do you show up? What is it for you? How do you make sure that you are showing up to what you have promised yourself first before you show up for other people? Please share your thoughts and contributions here on the live chat and I will sample them. So as long as we are going into this recording, I am still live on the back end and I will be able to 
look at your contributions and respond live. So allow me now to just jump in and be able to share our episode for today. And um, there it is. I hope you do enjoy it. See you on the other side. Well, you think that you belong there, you know? So, in my research, she found that in 2015, 95% of the female the actual number is 10 to 15%. So, I'm not saying it's But I do find that it was a larger number. A larger number of most females are finding that they need to be to be females. My apologies, I do understand that the voice was not, the sound was not coming through. So we're gonna try this one more time. This is me showing up and I do hope that now it can come live. Great to see you there, Lewis. Great to see you. So let's try this one more time, one more time. Okay, so we go now into share screen. Okay. According to Dr. Tasha Uritz, extensive research on self-awareness over several years with a thousand people, she found out that there were two types of people. Now, 95% of her sample group believed that they were self-aware 95% believe they were self-aware and I'm sure you think that you belong there yeah so in her research she found there were two types of people 95% believed that they were self-aware but the actual number is 10 to 15% and that was the second group so the two types of people the ones who believe they're self-aware held a larger uh, plot of it which was 95 percent whereas only 10 to 15 percent actually was self-aware something to think about isn't it i'll leave that there for now well in may here at lmc consultancy we've been working on energy and prosperity that's what we are all about, just energy and prosperity. And we've been having discussions about what does that mean for you? So today is no different. We are looking at the things that life has dealt us. And life has dealt us a couple of things. I mean, look at what has happened in the year and a half around the world. So we've all been dealt the same thing. We can either look at it as an opportunity or we can look at it as um, a bump in the road that is so inconveniencing that my life has come to an end, you know, the adage of uh, the chicken licking, 
uh, the little chicken whose uh, the whole world had crashed, the sky had come crashing down on its head. And that's what we can look at this situation that we've been going through. So I encourage you to ask yourself this question. Now that life deals you these different hands, what is your take? Are you a creator? Are you a witness? Or are you a victim? These are very important questions. Are you limiting yourself in a certain way? Or are you allowing yourself to thrive? So on the thread, I would love for you just to share with me exactly what it is that you feel. Hello, Christine. Good to see you there. Karibu sana. We are talking about self-awareness. And on self-awareness, I've just been sharing a statistic from Dr. Tasha Urish, who was carrying out a research on self-awareness. And she actually worked a few years on it, several years actually, with several thousands of people. And she found out that there were two types of people. The first type of person made up the 95%, and they felt that they were self-aware. But actually, we had 10 to 15% are the people who are actually self-aware. This is the research from Dr. Tasha Urish. So where do you fall? Why don't you share with us in the thread exactly where you fall, what you think, and what successes you have shared and managed to get through the years with self-awareness. Welcome to Tuesday Talks at Three. This is a platform where we help women get unstuck and onto their true potential through unlocking their limiting beliefs. I am a certified clarity coach, I'm a mentor, and I'm an online facilitator. My name is Lucy McCritis, and I'm the owner of LMC Consultancy. We help women, you know, just get on in this journey of life as we call it. Today, we are premiering on IG. We're bringing Tuesday Talks here because we usually have Tuesday Talks on my Facebook page on the wall, and that's where we have it as live. I do hope that the memo was received and that everybody is going to be signing here today, signing in here today, because we are not on Facebook today. So today, we seek to understand how self-aware are you what is it that makes you self-aware? Do you know what it is? Do you figure out the spaces that you need? I want to ask you a very simple question. Now that you know what the statistics are, where do you fall? And those statistics, oh, Karibu sana, Christine Bogwa, uh, Karibu sana, Asa Manuela, I hope I pronounced that well. And Blue Luxury, good to see you here. I was just uh, recapping on what we are discussing today. It's all about self-awareness. And we've shared some statistics that only 95% of people report that they are self-aware, when the true fact is only 10 to 15% of us are self-aware. Do you know what that means? It means that on an average, only 80% of us are lying to ourselves every day. I mean, imagine that. It's a very eye-opener. It's, it's a thought that gets you thinking. So I've been lying to myself. I don't know who I am. So what next? Is it the end of the world? Well, it's not. The good news is that this skill of being self-aware can actually, it can be worked on, it can be developed. So we want to be able to develop this, this muscle of self-awareness because you need to know yourself. And I've got three points that I would like to share with you because we have to be very intentional if we want to become self-aware. It is not a journey that is overnight. It takes time, but you have to be intentional about what it is. And the first one is to have a very difficult conversation with self because it's about being self-aware. It's not about being somebody else aware. And here at Tuesday Talks at 3, our main objective is to help build one another. And so today, with the topic of self-awareness, I want you to write it down on a piece of paper. Go on, take a paper, take a pen, and just begin to commit to yourself intentionally because nobody else is going to do it for you. So let's go, yeah? So you need to have that difficult conversation with yourself. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to be giving you a way that you can have this conversation with yourself because it has to be structured. If it is not structured, 
you'll just be get you'll get carried away with the wind you know somebody will come and give you a plan and you'll get carried away with the plan or as you start doing something you'll get disoriented and distracted it's too many things competing for our time today as we are working as we are hustling as we are panicking as we are anxious as we are hear hearing news about the situation around the world so you will get distracted therefore i really need you to have a piece of paper and a pen and just we will get to it about how we can actually put down some ideas how to have a conversation so the second one is taking feedback yes you do need feedback from people i'm not talking about validation i am talking about feedback from people just understanding how people see you how people perceive you it is important that you do this if anything for the reason that you know that once you know who you are when you've had that conversation, you then drive the narrative, guys. You then drive the narrative. You tell people who you are, and then you show up as that person. But you need the feedback, because then you need to know, am I really showing up as that person, or am I preaching water and drinking wine? You know, so that is the second part. So the first one is you're going to have to have difficult conversations with self. Number two is you're going to have to ask for feedback. And we will go through that and some ideas of how you can be asking for feedback. And then you can take that feedback as a learning curve. And number three is the most important one of them all, where you trust yourself. We normally do not trust ourselves. You've got this sixth sense within you you know what you need to do but then you don't trust yourself yet somebody else will come and give you the same idea in their own docket and then you will take yourself away from where you are and go and help somebody else achieve their goal because you are tending to trust them that they can do it and yet you do not trust self so those are the three areas that i believe uh, with the eye-opening statistics that we have, and I hope you have written it down, ladies, we can develop this self-awareness skill. You need to be intentional. And the three areas that I have covered are, you have to have a difficult conversation with yourself. You need to be able to welcome feedback. So you have to intentionally go and seek this feedback so you can see whether your narrative is working, whether people see you the way you want to be seen. And then you have to trust yourself. So in those three areas that we are looking at, I do hope that now you can start sharing in the thread, what are your thoughts? Where do you fall? Are you in the 95% of group of people who believe that you are self-aware? And if you are, share with us because at LMC, it's all about helping to build one another. So share with us, tell us what you feel. How have you managed to thrive and be part of those people who believe that they are self-aware? But then again, it comes a spoiler alert. If you do believe you're part of the 95%, then you have a lot of work to be done. You need to take on my three points on intentionality very serious because there's only 10 to 15% as per statistics of people who know exactly how they are as a person and therefore are self-aware. Do you need to be self-aware in this world? You do. Because in this world, there's going to be a lot of options, a lot of peer, a lot of pressure, a lot of people who are going to want you to do what they want you to do and you end up leaving your dreams on the side of the road. And guys, there's only one way that story ends, bitterness. Because you will look around and you will be that victim that I was alluding to earlier on. A victim where you are seeing things happening to people and you keep on asking, why is it not happening to me? So you blame the rest of the world. Well, let's try and look at some tools. I look at three specific areas and one of them is certainty. And then, like we said, there was feedback and then there's trust. The certainty is where you know who you are. And you will ask me, Lucy, how do I know who I am? I will just throw this analogy out there and I do hope it doesn't confuse you, but just gives you clarity. You heard that I am a clarity coach. So it is important that we have some clarity and please just drop here in the thread. If I am confusing you to death, just drop it there and let's have the conversation. So. Here is my analogy. If today I was to strip you of everything that you held dear, whatever it is that you held dear, 
Whether it is family that you held dear, I take that away from you. Whether it is your career that you hold dear, I take it away. Whether it's education, I take it away. Whether it is community, I take it away. Whether it's financial uh, uh, gain or financial uh, success or financial material things, I take it away. I literally strip you guys. I want you to imagine yourself in the most vulnerable of positions. You have nothing. Nada. Nada, nada. You have nothing. You have been stripped to your vulnerable core. And now as you're there, I want to teleport you as you are that vulnerable being, and I'm teleporting you now to a different place, a place that is new to you, a place that is alien to you, a place you've never been to, you've never heard of. And suddenly there's a community that welcomes you. And this community gives you things, you know, gives you a, a, a social uh, stepping or a social position, so to speak. Uh, it gives you uh, finances, it gives you property. Remember, you have been stripped. You're that vulnerable self. What did you come with? What one thing did you come with? That thing is who you are. So is it a mindset of abundance? Are you that kind of person? Are you an abundant person? And where does it show, show up? Does it show up in your home, the way you receive guests? You know, uh, does it show up in the way you spend your money on people? You are abundant in your living. Are you bigger than life? You know, so maybe that's being abundant. Or does it show up in your, what, in integrity? Are you an honest person? Are you somebody we can deal with? Is that what teleported to this other place? Whatever it is, I want you to take a moment and think about it. How would you describe yourself if you've been stripped down to your vulnerable self and you've been teleported to another place. How is that going to be able to bring you back to the person that you are? Because that is a core value. You're able to go there and say when they interview you, you say, I am, I am a happy and bubbly person. You have described yourself. That is a core value. Your principles also they kind of helicopter around that. Where your core values have to be something positive, they cannot be negative. Your principles have been the ones that you have lived by. And let's just hear, Kristin Bugwa, you have sent a comment here. I have been there in a season of life, stripped down in most ways. I hear you, Christine, and you're not alone. And the fact that you're talking about it in past tense means that you have overcome it. And we would love for you to share with us because we are helping to build one another on this platform. In that season of life, it must have been very challenging. Yet who were you in that season of life? And are you the same person today? What word comes to life? Is it passion? Are you a passionate person? And so when we teleport you to this other world, is your passion going to show up in everything that you do? These are questions you ask yourself because core values will always come from a positive tense. But how are you using them? And as you continue to write down these core values, we were looking at principles. What are these principles? Now, to give you an example, these principles are those things that you totally believe in because of the way you were brought up. There's a belief that you have uh, and you're principled by it. In my case, I was brought up to believe that hard work is what pays. That's a principle that I have. I am slowly changing that to smart work is what pays. But I was driven by a principle in the beginning and this came from my family. And when it came, it was about how hard you worked, determined the kind of life that you lived. Thank you, Christine Bogwa. You say, it's my values that stayed with me. My mindset had taken a beating so that I had to work to rebuild. I hear you, Christine. And I'm resonating with that. I can, I can actually feel it because these are true experiences. There's a reason for everything, for every season, as we say, you know, every season has a reason. There's a reason for every season. The things that you go through, choose to ask yourself, and why is this happening for me? Write that down. Why is this happening for me? It is not happening to me. So right now, the pandemic is happening to all of us, but then there are those of us who are creators. 
We are creating opportunities during this time. There are some of us who are witnesses. We are so paralyzed by fear or limiting beliefs that we cannot move forward, guys. Or we are victims and we are blaming everything and everybody. And like we say here in Kenya, because I am beaming from Nairobi, Kenya, you know, Serkali, the government, we are blaming everybody. We blame the government. We blame, blame our spouses, our significant others. We blame our siblings. We are blaming everybody except ourselves. We don't take ownership of what it is that we are meant to be. Matiso Erastus, great to have you here. <laughs> Good to see you, Erastus. I do hope we're going to stay steady, eh, Erastus. You know what I'm talking about, Karibu Sana. So yes, so are you a creator? Are you a witness or are you a victim? It's so important for you to know exactly where you fall in this life. And that is what is being self-aware. So what discussion are you having with yourself? What are my core values? And I love what Christine Bugwa has shared with us. So feel free to share with us in the thread exactly what your experience has been. When did you have this aha uh -huh moment about your core values and about your principles? What were they? I have shared that a principle for me that was that I had to work hard. I believed that for the longest time. So even though it was a principle, it also became my limiting belief. And I did not believe that if I was to work any other way, I would make it in life. However, that limiting belief of mine has been challenged. It was challenged by an individual who asked me, Lucy, if everybody who worked hard made it in life, then everybody on this earth, we should be having a higher percentage of people who've made it, especially in Africa, because we work hard. We break a sweat. It got me thinking, and I started working towards a narrative of working smart. We need to work smart. So let's look at certainty. And in certainty, you need to know who you are. We have stripped you to that vulnerable self. Who are you? I hope you've written at least one word or two words where you can describe yourself because when we move on to feedback, we'll be involving other people's feedback on you. We're not looking for validation, don't get me wrong. We're just looking to see how is the world receiving you? Have you been able to inform the world who you are? And therefore, every time you show up, you show up as that person. Were you successful in doing that? That is what we are hoping to find out when we go into feedback. Yeah. So let me share with you a rejection story which ended up reinforcing so much of my limiting beliefs. And this was around my area of career. And the first time that I, to my mind, I remember facing rejection was when I was in a managerial position. And the kind of rejection that I received, I, I felt it as rejection because, you know, things happen to all of us, but the way that we receive them varies from one person to another. And in this case, for me, when I was told in my place of work as a manager that it wasn't working, I felt rejected. Why? Because I'm the kind of individual who shows up. And when I am showing up, I'm showing up with all my guns blaring. I am here. I am present. I'm not somewhere else. I am here. And so for somebody to tell me week after week that it wasn't working, it really worked on my self-esteem. And I remember that as a child, I used to be told, if you're not good at something, move on and look for that thing that is good for you and that you're good at. And so what did I do to such a beautiful job? I handed in my resignation. I handed in my resignation. My boss had told me that it wasn't working, I wasn't good enough, and my boss challenged me. And I quit. Today as a life coach, and when I say life coach, I am using my life experiences to help build one another. Today as a life coach, I encourage people and I say, failure is an option, quitting is not. Failure is an option. You do not quit, you look for another way to skin this cat. You change the route, but your vision remains constant. I want you to write this down, that your vision is bigger than your present situation. 
My vision at that point was to grow to a certain level in my career. Now, I quit, and that affected my vision. It took me that much longer to arrive at that vision. I did. I arrived at the vision, but it took me longer because I quit. I should have taken that failure and used it as a learning, and then moved on and became stronger. Because success and growth does not happen without change. Success and growth does not happen without you having these instances where you feel that you want to quit, but you choose to take those experiences and you apply them and you keep moving. So your vision is bigger than your present situation. Don't forget that. If there's one thing that you can take away from this life is that one statement, that your vision is bigger than your current situation. So you need to stay on the course. There's going to be different routes. I mean, look at the highway. You've got different exits that you can take, but you can always come back to the highway. You've got different routes to a specific destination. You've got two or three options. It's up to you. Maybe option one is not working. Start taking the next option, guys, but do not quit. Because when you quit, you start from ground zero. When you fail, you just come back and you continue from a point of experience. It is so important that you remember that. So my rejection continued like this to a second job and a third job and a fourth job. And by the time I arrived at my main vision where I wanted to achieve in my career, when I got there and I was told the same thing, that it wasn't working, you'd think that by now I would be so good at handling rejection. You see, guys, I had never changed my narrative. I had never connected my sense of feeling rejected to a limiting belief. I'm gonna stop right there and just take you back to your subconscious. In your subconscious, you have got narratives, you've got stories, you've got something you always tell yourself when you want to step up to something new. For instance, today is my first time to do Tuesday Talks at 3 on IG Live. I can assure you the limiting beliefs were in my house, in my head, surrounding me in my environment. You can't do this, Lucy. The internet is gonna let you down. Your content is going to be hollow. Nobody is going to show up. Well, guess what, guys? You're here. I do have the content, and my internet is holding steady. And so what if one of them doesn't work or all of them don't work? I showed up. I am self-aware. I am somebody of a core value where I am consistent, I am reliable, I am loyal, and I show up in behavior of coming here and being able to share with you. Rosemary Odima, it's great to see you. Today we're talking about self-awareness, and we have been able to see that from a statistic that we have shared with a Dr. Tasha Urish, that only 95% of people believed that they were actually self-aware. And that was not the truth because the real number is 10 to 15%. So where do you fall, Rosemary? Thank you so much for your wave. Share with us. Are you self-aware? Do you belong to the 10 to 15% or do you belong to the 95%? And how has that worked for you? Let us help build one another. We then went on to talk about core values and principles. And right now I'm sharing on limiting beliefs and my rejection story of being told that things were not working at my place of work. I had arrived, I had the job of a lifetime, and those words came back. And the limiting beliefs made me resign from my job. You'd think that by now I'd know how to handle rejection, but I'd not changed my narrative. But today I am here, despite the three areas that could have gone horribly wrong, which is no content, no internet, and no people to share here with. But you're, it's all here. The limiting beliefs, I told them, sit down, I'm doing this. You need to speak to them. Thank you so much, Rosemary. You say you're in between there. Yes, we do have an in between, but an awareness is good. So as we're moving on with certainty, it is real life situations that make you realize that things can go horribly wrong. But how prepared are you to move on? In my case, Rejection happens for me every day, but I choose to manage rejection differently now. My limiting beliefs are there. They don't go on leave. They don't go on holiday. They don't sleep. Every time I want to get to another level, they come. So today 
is a new space for me on IG Live with Tuesday Talks at 3. And it may not seem on my face, but let me tell you, the voices are in my head. But I'm asking them to step aside, guys, because I'm doing this. There are people who need to hear this message. So where are you? Rosemary says that she's in between there. She's in between not knowing uh, how self-aware she is and knowing. There are certain things that she does. And Rosemary, I do hope that the areas that we're going to share with you are going to help you to start growing and developing self-awareness. So I created an acronym called CREATOR. And I'm just going to read it to you. I'm just going to read this creator. So creator, as you know how it is spelled out, C-R-E-A-T-O-R. -E so on C, we say craft your areas of focus. It is so important for you to know when you're a creator, what are your areas of focus? So in this time of the COVID pandemic, what areas can you focus on? Write it down on that piece of paper. Review your journey. Look back and see how far you've come. What is it that you feel? that you can do? What do you love doing? What are you good at? What can you get paid for? These are questions you should be asking yourself. So review that journey so that you can actually fine tune your areas of focus. Explore your gut and put it into words. This is your purpose. And I know purpose has been overrated, but guys, you have the answers within you. You know what it is you're meant to be. It's at times fear that paralyzes us and we become, I beg your pardon, we become witnesses. And this fear stands between you and the reality of that vision. So start to face it now. Therefore, explore your gut and put it into words. And then we've got action listing. Now, if you want to do something and it just remains in your head, it's no good to you or to anybody else who can benefit from it. Let it happen in the head because that's where your vision begins. And then put it down on a piece of paper the way I keep on asking you to write something. And put down your actions and put timelines to your actions. And that's what A stands for. And then the limiting beliefs that I speak of, these things are real, guys. Just find out. Have a moment and ask yourself, where is this fear coming from? Why am I feeling I am not good enough? Did somebody tell me something when I was young? Did something happen to me when I was young? Have I seen it happening in the world? And therefore, for me, it is true. So you've got to thrash out your blocks, those limiting beliefs, and then own your narrative. Know who you are. Own that narrative. Have your voice. And last but not least, guys, I say ride the wave and enjoy the journey. Because you know what? There's nothing smooth. And if it is smooth, there's something wrong. You're not living life. You've got to wake up and have that energy and prosperity that we're talking about today on self-awareness. Dive right into it. Things will go wrong. And when things go wrong, use them as stepping stones to success. So failure is an option. And failure is what we use as a stepping stone to success. So we've looked at certainty and we've looked at creator. And I ask you again, and you could share with us on the thread. Are you a creator? Are you somebody who takes what life has dealt you, looked at the opportunities and run with it? Are you a victim and you blame everything for things that have happened to you, as opposed to asking, why is this thing happening for me and take it as an opportunity? Or are you a witness? You are so paralyzed that you cannot move. You feel that if you move, you'll have to spend money that you don't have. If you move, people are going to talk about you because they know about your past. So you're not even going to try anything. If I take this risk, I am going to lose out on relationships, position, people who know me as a life coach. Oh, no. In fact, let me change that. People know me as a hospitality specialist. But here I am as a life coach. So for me to make that decision was to take a risk. It was a shift of my skill set. If I never took that risk, it would have been because I was a witness. I would still be sitting and just having that one revenue income. And right now we all know that the tourism industry is back on the mend. It is starting from scratch. It is a journey it has to travel. But then there are other industries where we are able to, to be more effective and make money. So for me, I still have my hospitality, which is building up. And I don't give that up. That's in my DNA. 
And then I've got my life coach, which now I've started and put together and creating a whole community. So it's so important that when you're looking at clarity, certainty, being a creator, you know where you belong. When you're looking at clarity and being a creator and all these lovely things, certainty is important. So let's look at feedback. Christine Bogua says, I am a creator, but sometimes I take too long in the what if stage and anxiety. And it's good to hear. I'm not the only one who hears these voices in my head. You're not the only one, Christine. Yes, at least now you know these voices in the head. They have a name. They can be inner critic, uh, not only an inner critic. They can just be what we call kamutu, those voices that come into your head and challenge you every time you want to step up. And you know, Christine, these voices tend to protect you because your mind, your brain protects you. If your brain knows that every time you walked down a dark alley, you will be attacked because it happened before or there are statistics of people being attacked as they walk down dark alleys. The minute you start walking down an alley and the lights go off, your brain kicks in into protection. So it's going to ask you to flee, not to fight. It's going to ask you to flee. It is protecting you. However, when the brain protects you, it keeps you in that place. Now there's the other end. You may just finish that alley and arrive at the place that you wanted to get to on time. A good thing could happen. You might find the success on the other side. But because of your limiting belief, you have limited yourself and you're not thriving. So Christine, I'd love you to go back to those limiting beliefs, write them down, know what they, they are. Those are the difficult conversations you're gonna have with yourself. Question, where did it come from? Close your eyes, breathe in and breathe out, breathe out and just lower down your heart beat and start to imagine where did it come from? Allow your body to feel those different emotions. Where did it come from? And you will find that it comes from a time of your youth. Something was said, something was done, or you lived through something that has made you believe this to be true, this limiting belief. So I do hope that helps. Welcome, Tasha. Good to see you here. Good to see you joining us. We're talking about self-awareness. And the question is, how self-aware are you? Are you part of the group that thinks that they're self-aware? Or are you a part of the 10 to 15% who actually know that they're self-aware? How does that work for you? What have you done? Any experiences you'd like to share with us? So let's jump into feedback. Now, when we look at feedback, I'm not talking about with feedback, we're not talking about validation, like I said. We are talking about you driving the narrative. When we get this feedback, we now know, is my narrative being reflected in the world? Do people see me the way I tell them that I people see me the way I tell them that I am? Or are they already deciding who I am? And there's a danger in that. Because if people are deciding for you who you are, You've lost the power of the narrative. You want to be in control of that. You want to gain that control back. So feedback, now, we, now that we understand what we're doing with feedback, I would like you to write down, and this is some homework that you're gonna do for yourself. Identify three people who are not related. So maybe somebody who knows you from work, somebody at home, and uh, maybe a friend. And just ask them to describe you in two words. I will give you six words that will be describing you. Get ready to be shocked, get ready to be alarmed, get ready to be annoyed, get ready to feel pressure. Because when I say pressure, there are people who are going to say things about you, are gonna say, is that really me? No way, no way, that's not me, that's you. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not bigger than life, and maybe you are. So have a look at those words and just figure out what it means for you. Have a talk with self, even here on the feedback. The second one I would say is be open to feedback. Choose to have a growth mindset or an abundant mindset because when you get feedback, don't run away from it. Embrace it. Embrace it so that you can use it as a learning curve. And once you have this feedback, use it so that you can pick 
one thing or two things or three things that perhaps you could use to improve self. Because remember, this is about improving self. Or you could use to affirm self, whatever it is. So that is feedback. And I'd really love for you to share with us what it is that you describe yourself as. I describe myself as a consistent, passionate, integrity, person who is honest. I will always show up. So I'm loyal. I will show up. It may be challenging to show up. And the minute that I don't show up, I don't feel aligned. I feel there's something wrong. Something is just not right. And so it is important that when you put down these things that you believe are self, you have that conversation with you. And why am I saying this, guys? Because at times you think that is your core value when actually you're living somebody else's core value. So maybe your mother told you you have to be hardworking. But that's not you. You're not a hard worker. You're somebody who knows how to wing it. And who said winging it is not a core value? You know how to survive, you're a survivor. But all this time you've been trying to work hard and it's not working. And you're not feeling aligned. That's what it is. You're living somebody else's core value. So your mother is a hard worker and you are the survivor. Your mother can actually show how she worked so hard to put you guys through school. And for you, you're a survivor, you're a hustler, you're you know, you don't have to live as per mom's core values. You need to identify yourself. And if you are interested in knowing how to identify your core values, I am running a masterclass, which I will be sharing on my IG. It's on the 22nd or the 29th of May. It goes through two sessions and we help you to identify your core values and then to live aligned with your core values. Yeah. So when we are looking at feedback, it's important. I hope guys you do it. And as we are coming to the end of our session, I would like us to talk about trust. It sounds weird when I say you must trust self. If you do not trust self, then really, who can you trust? You know yourself. In my case of rejection, I did not trust self and I paid a hefty price. I would have arrived that job of mine sooner than I did. But there was a plan. I guess I needed to learn and grow along the way so that when I showed up in that job, I was the person that I was meant to be for the people who were reporting to me. When things are delayed at times, guys, don't threat. Don't, don't fret about it, I beg your pardon. Just understand there's a reason, like Christine had said, there's a reason for this season when things at times take long. You do what you need to do. Be intentional. So let's talk about trust. You need to be yourself. If I was myself when I was being told that things are not working, I would have challenged the status quo. I would have been like a, a defending lawyer, you know, in a court of law. And I would have been defending what I believed to be true. But I didn't know self. And therefore I chose somebody else to drive my narrative. But today I know better and I'm a life coach and I am here to walk you through it. If you are going through that, guys, you need to be able to understand self and be intentional and have a tough discussion with yourself. Be kind to yourself. I am my worst critic. I am my worst critic. When things go wrong, I beat myself up. But nowadays when I understand the importance of being kind to self, I'm always reminding myself, be kind to self, Lucy. Just be kind to self because nobody else is going to understand exactly where that shoe hurts. And I'm my number one fan. You have to be your number one fan. You have to root for yourself because you have no hidden agendas. If I come and I'm rooting for you, you don't know what my agenda is. So you have to be your number one fan. You have to be kind to yourself. And then you have to be decisive. Decide what you want to do what you want in life, and then enjoy the journey. Because there's no smooth journey. If it is a smooth journey, there's something very wrong. So guys, those bumps in your journey, whatever bumps it is that you are having, I can see here there's um, a secret agent, Forbes. I, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Good to have you here with us. We're talking about self-awareness. And now we're in the area of trust and how you must trust yourself Guys, you need to be kind to yourself. 
And when you're decisive and you decide what you want, go for it, guys. Go for it. There's going to be bumps. There's going to be failure along the way, but there's also going to be successes. There's going to be people who are going to grow with you along the way, and there are going to be those others that you're going to drop off the way. Do not rob yourself of the opportunity to enjoy this journey. Because much as there are bad days, there will be good days. And you chalk this up to experience. Experience is the best teacher. My father used to say that. So there you have it. We've got certainty, which came with the creator aspect, the acronym that I took you through. You've got feedback. And now we have got trust. So Christine Bougua, thank you so much for interacting with us and really making me feel fulfilled. Wow, how amazing was that? I mean, for me, just doing the simple throwback, um, opening, it's opening up my mind to more possibilities. And as we have these possibilities, we are coming to the end of our session today. I want to thank you so much for, for being here with us today on this throwback session. And, and thank you so much, Christine. Thank you so much, Louis. Thank you so much, uh, Jane, all of you, Lillian, for interacting today and, and making this so much fun. The question today is, how do you show up? And this is now as a result of how I showed up today. And how do you show up when you know that's a responsibility? How do you, how do you step up to your values? And as you can hear what my values are, my values being uh, consistency, my values being integrity, uh, being passionate. This is what I do. This is what gives me that energy to wake up in the morning and get up and do something about helping to build one another. And not only build one another, but also to be mindful of the fact that I need to be kind to myself. So self-awareness is invaluable. Uh, once you have self-awareness, you are able to do so much more. You're even able to just step back and just enjoy that peace and quiet of that space that you're in. Well, this August, I have 10 complimentary coaching slots of 45 minutes each around self-awareness. Now, securing your spot will open you up to a journey that we will take together. And I assure you, in fact, no, I guarantee you that this will be an amazing journey that you, we will take together because it'll be on to discovering who you are. Those difficult conversations that I'm alluding to in that particular clip that we have shared today of knowledge of self. This is what we're going to be doing, those difficult questions and just you discovering who you are, it's a journey. We will also have an understanding of how your limiting beliefs show up in your life. Whatever age you are today, you are a sum of your limiting beliefs, give or take. 95%, this is statistics that, that share that 95% of you showing up today as an adult is from the past things that built up and are in your subconscious. So this is what is showing up today. And then last but not least, identifying what you need to stop, continue and start doing. It's so powerful, it's a beautiful audit. So I say it again, this August, I have 10 complimentary coaching slots of 45 minutes each and just secure your spot. All you have to do is DM me on my social media platforms with I am in. And you will hear from me as I send you a, a calendar so that you can book your schedule. Uh, secondly, we have launched our online courses on our LMS, and we are calling this um, courses by LMS. Please 
visit our website and sign up. Well, there you have it from today's session. Thank you so much for staying through to the end. We continue to wish Catherine Silva a quick and a full uh, recovery so that we can have you here, Catherine. We need your wisdom. We need your motivation. We need your support when we are celebrating uh, Kenyan diversity. So we've talked about the creator. We've talked about the witness. We've talked about the victim. Which one are you? The choice is yours. The three main pointers to help you move forward. We have to have the difficult conversation with self. It is so important. You must have this conversation with self. You must ask for feedback. You cannot be afraid to hear what people say about you. That gives you the opportunity to go back in there and take back control of that narrative because they know about you because of what you've shown them, told them, or what you have not told them about you. How are we supposed to know who you are if you have not, uh, like we used to say during my time, flossed and told guys this is who you are. And then trust yourself. Be mindful of self. This is very important. I never leave you without takeaways. The takeaways are just as we have said in our clip today as we come to the end of our session. Number one, reconnect with your values. I did say that if I did not run a session today, I would not feel aligned. And therefore I needed to show up in this way. And right now I'm feeling fulfilled, guys. I've been able to deliver a session to you and I do hope it was valuable. I can see Jane Kavuna is saying, wow, this is wonderful. I am in and I will DM you. Well done, Jane. Definitely you are in and you are already taking up the first space. Guys, I've got nine more slots of 45 minutes each, which is a coaching session. Number two takeaway, plug into your feedback. Whatever it is that you are, you hear, I beg your pardon, whatever it is that you hear, Take it as feedback and work with it. You know, we want to be better than we were yesterday, five minutes ago, and it comes from feedback. And therefore, in this way, we have growth. We register growth. And last but not least, take the first step today, whatever that means for you, but take it, move forward. Do not stay in the same position that you were in. Have some growth. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, I beg your pardon, LMC Consultancy, for the recording of this session and share with us your feedback, what you thought about this throwback. If you would be interested in seeing more throwbacks, this was back in May 2021, and already so much has changed since then, but the message remains the same. Check out our social media platforms for our August Tuesday Talks at 3 lineup, and let us help build one another. Well, guys, until our next episode, be kind to yourselves. Bye-bye now.